Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. We put a state of AI agents report out earlier this fall where we asked around 600 uh, industry professionals what are kind of top use cases for AI agents. And one that came up as quite high is data transformation and enrichment. So some common themes that we've seen and we use internally for these types of agents are extraction information about companies and extraction information about people. Now, extraction information about people is really useful for things kind of like um, hiring pipelines or meetings with external third parties. You can kind of get context on someone before you talk to them. So a very generally useful agent architecture for extraction along both of these lines is you pass in whatever the input is. In the case of people, this could be an email address. In the case of a company, it could be a company name. Now, you take that and use an LLM to create a number of search queries based upon that input. You then do web research for each query. And here's the thing that we found to be pretty interesting and useful. Take the raw results from web research and produce some structured notes using an LLM from that. These notes consolidate information from raw research based upon your schema or what you eventually want to collect. Then in a second stage, I found it to be very nice to do the extraction step from those notes to the final output. Now you can consider doing this all in one shot. I found the results can be a bit better if you do this ref kind of this refinement into notes from the raw search results first. So that's just, just a minor thing I found to be a bit better in terms of performance. So now let's walk through a practical working example of this using our new People Researcher repo here. So I've cloned the repo, People Researcher, and all you need to do to get started here is just set your API keys for, in our case, Anthropic is the default model, and Tavli API. Now Tavli is a very nice web search engine. I found it to be easy to use and a generous free tier. You can use other search engines and other models though, of course, if you'd like. Then all you need to run is this command in terminal to spin up a local LangGraph server with your agent running. So when you run the command, you're gonna see this open up in your browser. This is just LangGraph Studio. This is a very convenient way to interact with LangGraph agents. And all you need to do to run this is open up this input and go ahead and you can look down here at all these categories, right? Now, the only one that's actually required is an email address. So I'll put in my email, lance at langchain dot dev okay and I'll go ahead and start so what's happening is the agent first looks at the email generates some search queries based upon it cool then it goes it kicks off some web search based on those queries using tabli so the assistant actually produces a bunch of notes from research pretty cool so these are kind of raw notes that the agent distills from the, the search results. Then it extracts information based upon a schema, reflects on that, and chooses to finish. So let's actually break out two important things here that are maybe a little bit unclear. First, where's the schema come from? You can see here, I didn't actually supply one, so what's going on? When you run the assistant, it actually uses a default schema if you don't supply one, so it's already provided for you. That is hard coded in the code, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Now, two is what's happening with reflection. Well, the intuition here is that it looks at the schema it extracted, and it just says, hey, have we populated all the fields that are in the provided extraction schema? And if so, we end. So it's just a way to basically look at what was extracted, and if anything's missing, it'll go ahead and regenerate queries to rerun research on any missing components and add those to our schema. So that's really all that happens there. Now in Studio, what's kind of nice is you can just always open up a run in Langsmith, click on this, and you can see here's all those nodes. You can open any of these up. You can see what happens under the hood. You can look at every single LLM call if you want. So this is if you really want to audit what's happening under the hood, you can very easily do that using Langsmith. Now, if you want to understand how this all works under the hood a bit more, all you have to do is go to the repo, source agent, graph.py, go down to the bottom, and you'll see this is actually where the graph itself is all laid out. 
So these, you'll see, are the names of the nodes, and these correspond to what we saw in Studio just now. You can see, generate the queries, research, gather notes, extract schema, reflect. Those are the four main steps we just walked through. Now, each of these are just functions. You can go to, for example, generate queries, look at the function, and really the main idea here is that we're going to generate some search queries based upon the provided information from the user, as well as the schema that we're eventually trying to populate. And really all that's happening here is we're going to go ahead and format a query writer prompt with all the information that we have. You can go to prompts.py to look at that query writer prompt right here. So you're a search query generator. Here's the person you're researching. Generate some number of queries. Here's the final schema that you want to uh, populate. Here's any provided notes and some other information about the queries. That's really it. So we get those queries create a list, write them back to state. That's all we have to do here. So we have some search queries, then just go to research person. Now this is where we're going to take those queries and kick off web search using Tably based on each one. We gather the results from web search, clean them up. And this is actually where we do some note taking based on those raw results. So you can look at this info prompt, go to prompts.py, open this up. You're doing web research on a person. Here's the type of information we want to extract. Here is the raw results that we've scraped from websites. And just write me some nice notes that kind of summarize the raw content based on what we care about extracting. That's the intuition here. Then after the research is done, we go ahead and gather notes and extract our final schema. So here, we're gonna use this extraction prompt we're just going to pass, here's the schema, here's all the notes we took, and you'll see we'll go ahead and use Claude 3.5, but specify structured output, pass in our schema, then we call the structured LLM with the system prompt that we just formatted up here, and we get the schema. That's really it. The final step is reflection. If you just kind of look at that quickly, here we format this reflection prompt. This is going to look at what we actually extracted and our original schema to see is there anything missing from what we extracted that's present in the original schema. That's really all we do. And what's kind of cool about this is we return is satisfactory, true or false. Now, if false, the LLM will also produce some follow-up queries to populate any missing information. So it's kind of nice, it's grouping this reflection and new query generation all in one step. So for missing something, it'll generate queries to help us populate that information. And then we route back to research. So if you look back at Studio, you can see this routing from reflection can go back to research or it can end depending upon that reflection phase. If it goes back to research, we just kick off web search again using any new queries that we generated. So this is pretty nice. So I do wanna call out that that extraction schema is provided for you as a default here in state.py. We'll go ahead and pass that in as a default if the user doesn't provide an extraction schema. That's really the main point here. We can see this, ex this extraction schema really just gets years experience, current company, role, prior companies. But here's the thing, you can modify the schema any way you want. So this can collect whatever information you care about and the research assistant will use whatever you want to target in your final extracted schema to guide its query generation. So it's kind of a nice end-to-end -end flow that uses this provided schema to kind of design its research. So that really gives you the flavor for this assistant. We found it to be quite useful. And this can be very nice if you wanna do very quick research about, for example, people that you're interviewing or people that you're having meetings with and produce a structured output that can be populated into, for example, a database. That's really where these types of extraction assistants really shine and why they're one of the most popular use cases that we see in our kind of overall agent survey. So this is a very simple and highly customizable uh, kind of template agent that you can use to do research on people given as little as an email address. So feel free to leave any comments below and hope you enjoyed, thanks. All right, now that we've seen how the people researcher agent works, 
we are going to dive into evaluating the people researcher agent, which is a key step towards getting any agent into production. So in this repository, we've provided a data set with a list of example people and reference outputs. And then we've also provided an evaluation script that can be used to evaluate the agent on this data set. So before we get into the evaluation, make sure you've installed Langsmith and that you've exported the proper API keys. In this case, we're using Anthropic for the LLM that we're going to use as a judge. And then um, run the create dataset script to create the dataset in Langsmith. And once you've done that, you should be able to head over to Langsmith and see the people data enrichment dataset. And if we look at an example, you'll see that the input is going to be the LinkedIn profile and the name of a person. And the raw output is going to contain the fields that we're trying to extract, which in this case is the role, the current company, the prior companies, and the years of experience. So now that we have our data set ready, we can run the evaluation script. So let's head over to the terminal and do just that. So here in the terminal, I've started the LangGraph server, the people researcher uh, graph by calling the UV command that starts the graph. And we can see it's being hosted at the following URL. So once it's being run and hosted at the proper URL, we can head over to a new terminal tab and run the run eval script by providing an experiment prefix and that corresponding URL that we just saw. So if we give it one second, we should see a progress bar that shows how the evaluation is going. So perfect. We see right here the progress of the evaluation. Since this agent's going to need to run over each example, we're not going to stick around here to see all of the progress. Instead, we're going to head back into the repository and read over the evaluation script. So in our evaluation script, we have a couple of fields up here. We have a few categories of fields. We have numeric, we have fuzzy match, and we have list fields. So our numeric fields, we're going to check if the agent's output is within 10% of the expected value for fields that are fuzzy matches, such as the current company. We want to give credit even, the name, even if the name isn't exactly right. For instance, the difference between Apple or Apple Inc. Uh, should still give credit to the agent. And then for our list fields, we're being fairly generous and just checking if at least one item in the agent output overlaps with the expected output. And then we actually have the function that computes that score. So we're providing this prompt to an LLM that has structured output and the structured output is fairly simple. It's just a score and a reasoning field. The reasoning field is there to use some chain of thought for the LLM, which improves its performance. All we're going to return in the end is one, that single numeric score, which we'll see in our experiment in one second. We're also going to have to provide a target function, a function that we are actually evaluating. In this case, it's really simple. We're just going to take the remote graph from that URL, that agent URL that we're hosting, and we are going to run it on the inputs of the data set, and then we're going to output some outputs that our evaluator can use to compare against the reference outputs. And one thing to note here is that even though we're using the remote graph on this line, all you have to do to run a Langsmith evaluation is to provide a function that takes in an inputs dictionary and then outputs something in the format that your evaluators are expecting. So this isn't limited to using remote graph or even LangGraph at all. As long as you write a Python function that utilizes your agent, be it LangGraph or elsewhere, you can run an evaluation in Langsmith the exact same. So all of this comes together in the run eval function, which actually calls the evaluate function from Langsmith. It runs the agent, it has the evaluator there, and um, there are a few command line arguments you can pass, which you can look at on your own time to explore a little more. So now let's head back over to Langsmith and look at the experiment. All right, perfect. So we can see that the experiment has finished now, and there are scores for each of our examples. And if we wanted to take a look at a single example, we can see the reference output here in the top right, and we can see the uh, output of our agent. So we can see it did certain things correct, such as finding the current company and the role, but it struggled to get the prior companies. So it didn't get a great score because it only got the current company and the role correct. The years of experiment experience was off by four, which isn't 10%. So it only got two of two out of four of the fields, which is a 50%. And we can use this data point as well as the corresponding Langsmith trace to find ways we could improve our agent. So if we notice it's 
struggling to get the prior companies a lot, maybe we can instruct it on how to extract the prior companies from LinkedIn in a better way so that it, it improves its performance. So this was just a brief introduction into evaluating the people researcher agent, but I hope that it gives you a, a slight idea of how you can use Langsmith to iterate on your agents by running evaluations and then exploring the results of your evaluations, noting what your agent is struggling with, and then attempting to improve your agent in those areas until you're satisfied with the performance. So I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to evaluating agents, and I hope you can use Langsmith to evaluate your own agents and get them ready to be production grade. Have a great rest of your day.